Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome back from lunch to the next panel here in Hamburg at the Capital Link Conference. Uh, pleasure to have you here. I think it was an inspiring day so far, so we hope we can continue on that one, together looking at themes of innovation, progress in the shipping industry. My name is Christian Finnan. As a partner of Watson, Farley and Williams, I'm happy to share this panel here with five experts in the ship finance space. Great to have you all here. Um, I do believe we have a number of topics to tackle, but the Cable Link team didn't give us a lot of time for that. So to dive into the conversation, I would like everyone of you to just give a brief introduction, who you are, what you do, what your role in the shipping finance space might be. Instead of me telling how great you all, you can tell it yourself. So, Martijn, give us a start. Uh, Martijn Vertel, uh, part of the ship finance team of First Citizens Bank. Uh, it, I always joke, First Citizens is the U.S. Sparkasse in, uh, in ship finance. Uh, headquartered out of uh, New York, 14 people, $1.4 billion uh, portfolio, and looking for business. So, you'll find me in the back <laughs> later on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Zoran Bibo, uh, Group CFO of Heron Group, uh, being a family-owned uh, ship owner here in Germany, based in Bremen, and having also investments or being the owner of SL Heavy Lift, uh, and Heavy Lift multi-purpose operator, as well as Interurine as US liner business. Yeah, Maximilian Otto, I'm the director of IG Capital, which is a capital advisory arm of uh, global shipbroking firm Ifco Galbraith. We focus primarily on arranging debt and leasing structures for ship owners. Uh, Moritz Fuhrmann, co-CEO and CFO of MPC Container Ships. Um, we own a fleet of roughly uh, 60 feeder container vessels. We're stock listed on the uh, stock exchange in Oslo since uh, 2017 when the company was uh, incorporated, um, and we as a company have a pretty transactional uh, DNA, meaning we've been buying and selling uh, around 150 ships ever since being established, which also means there's a lot of uh, work to be done on, on the financing side. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Iraklis Sirigodis. I'm Director of Origination for Neptune Maritime Leasing. We started Neptune about three, three and a half years ago. We had uh, just under half a billion in exposure and we'd like to grow it much more in, in the years to come. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. I do believe it's a quite interesting, diverse mix of backgrounds we are having here on the panel. So, so let's do the best out of it. And to give it a start into the conversation, more on a general question, I think, what have you seen as significant trends in the ship finance space over the last one or two years, quite dynamic years, I would uh, say, and Maybe Heraklis, give it, give it a try to, to explain what, what are the trends you are, you are seeing, you have been seeing over the last one or two years? I think that's pretty simple to answer. You know, all the marks have been good or very good. So uh, ship owners are basically either deleveraging their books, uh, repaying off facilities. So that's very healthy and prudent. And in terms of the, our business, which is in the ship finance space, uh, obviously, there are lots of challenges to grow because, as I said, the requirements and the needs of the ship owners nowadays are not that great, given uh, all the things that we know about the market. Um, and therefore, uh, usually um, we see lots of competition, lower margins, lo loser covenants in facilities, um, you know, the, the, the typical things that um, I'm pretty sure most of the people, if not all the people in the room, are, have seen the last few years. Okay, so no, 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 the new trend as such, I think, is, is more, more the trend we saw recently. So, Moritz, is there anything you observe differently from, from, from that point? So no, I would say pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, obviously, very much to the liking of uh, Zura and I, uh, being in a, in a fine spot uh, right now. We, we all know shipping is uh, as volatile as it can get. So, uh, let's, let's speak again in three years, then the market will will look different, but um, obviously for now there's uh, ample liquidity on the owner side, um, so less demand for the typical high leverage financings. 
And on the bank side, with all the prepayments that the banks have been receiving in the last couple of years, there's also ample liquidity on the bank side. So you have yeah. a bit of a disconnect uh, between demand and, and supply on, on the liquidity side, which then obviously leads to um, tight pricing, uh, loose covenants, as Heraklis just mentioned. And um, you know, in a current environment where you look at asset values, uh, historically speaking, you are close to peak values. It's always a a delicate situation to be in from a bank's perspective, right? Because you, you don't want to take too much risk. Uh, but on the other side, you, you, you're also driven by, you know, making new business and earning some upfront fees. Okay, so then as we try to look at the evolving landscape of shipping, let's give it a twist in, in your direction, Max. So I think you look at the market a bit from a different way than, than we heard so far. So maybe you can combine your outlook generally also with the question, is there an impact of technology? Are you seeing uh, ideas of using digital financing solutions, things like that? Uh, I think probably you are well placed to give it a spin in that direction. <coughs> yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, on the just a comment maybe on on, on, on what we observe at the moment is, is absolutely in line with what Morris just said: uh, margins down, risk appetite up. Um, but uh, also there is a, a shift probably from the, from the Asian leasing, Chinese leasing side, also looking into non-recourse structures, what is, what is interesting, which for sure hasn't been there a couple of years ago. Um, that's very much driven by, by high prepayments and, and also by the pressure to deploy capital. Um, on the technology side, I mean, there's not nothing really super exciting at the moment, I would say, that is, that is looking like a big shift is happening. I think where we all would <coughs> favor uh, some, some innovation is probably in the, in, the, in the documentation process, which maybe is uh, more, your, more, more your expertise, but I think <laughs> it's, uh, it's cumbersome still to, to, to wrap deals up. And, and for sure, there are interesting, uh, interesting um, technology being developed to to make a the contract forming process of the deal um, more efficient. Okay, the panel is not about uh, <laughs> a lo a lawyer, laws, lawyers using AI, but <laughs> we we definitely look at all these opportunities. I can uh, I can promise you. I think uh, Zoran, I think also your general view on that one, technology wise. Not sure if, if that is something you are looking into. Do you mean in technology concerning? Yeah, to, how, to how you deal? With, how do you how do you deal with your financing? Is there anything support you, uh, of the recent development technology? You're using anything you do differently than from back your days in the bank? So it's sure, we we're doing it differently, but uh, at the moment it's 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 an owner market. So at the moment, frankly speaking, it's it's simply uh, you can sit and wait. Uh, it's not the need like uh, five years ago where you probably would have need needed such a technology to may find another financier that is willing to go into a smaller transaction. Uh, for, for us, it's much more the discussion about uh, strategic investments and um, how do we find partners, not for a market where at the moment everything is going great and for sure uh, as an owner you have a lot of equity on your side and you can push the banks wherever you like, so to say. Um, but I mean that's a very short-term view. So if, I, if I'm on a non-recourse situation, uh, simply trying to make an asset play, sure, perfect thing to do. But us, being an operator and uh, thinking uh, to secure car, uh, for, for our cargo's room for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, uh, for us it's at the moment much more the question. Um, what is actually also the need of financiers uh, five years down the road, ten years down the road. Um, and so there is a big difference for us as we have a lot of discussions with our financiers also to understand uh, how can we be interesting for them in five years where may the markets have changed. And again, everything is a little bit more complicated. Martin, what's your response to the owner market? It's definitely an owner's market, um, and, and all of us, all the financiers, are, are competing for uh, uh, fewer business with people that already have a lot of money. Um, where we have our advantages and disadvantages, the disadvantage is that we, we will not compete on the risk profile, and given that, we, we've applied a lot of product innov innovative, if you like, 
on uh, will provide uh, revolvers on the ship bases. So we, we make use of our own unique position that we are long natural dollars, so people can borrow with us, prepay, redraw, no penalties. Uh, that, is, that is how we try to, to be different in this market. So not necessarily a technology advantage, uh, but, but a little bit of a product innovation. There's, there's, there's ample financing from China, which is powerful, can do big tickets, uh, are close to shipbuilding, uh, are marketed by, by a number of intermediaries. Uh, so we try to carve out our own space by being innovative, very flexible on what we offer, don't concede on a risk profile, so not every deal is for us, mm -hmm. and be absolutely uh, number one in terms of pricing. We, we're destroyer of all margin. So <laughs> this this market is is partly because of us, because that's that's how we like to compete. Okay, so that's <laughs> interesting <laughs> to to hear probably from some old audience. So you mean we get the old one? What what was it? One thirty three point eight or something? Wasn't yeah, it the well, old margin for kgs? <laughs> so if show best price, <laughs> show best price, and we'll match. So here, it could be a term sheet later. Yeah, it could be a term sheet later. So, and, and we heard risk as a word in one or two of, of, of the contributions uh, uh, to so far. And, and of course, you are the financial institution here on, on, on the panel. Um, um, and you say you're not taking any risk, but, but how is generally your feeling of, of and risk appetite was mentioned um, earlier. I, how would you say is the risk associated with, with ship finance Today has it been 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 changed? Is it kind of is it, how look you at this topic? Uh, listen, there's, it, it's it's a lively debate at the moment. I was in ship finance 15 years ago, and things were low margins, cough light, high values. Everybody was doing super duper. So there's a lot of similarities from the past. So we're we're actually quite careful what's going to happen next. It is still a volatile industry, so things will come down. Um, so we're, we're vigilant when it comes to the risk profile. Doesn't mean we don't take risk because otherwise you don't do business. Uh, but but we're but more careful in choosing counterparts, in choosing structures. Uh, so so that is that is we don't do every deal. We're we're quite careful. So recourse, non recourse. We do non recourse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Iraklis, Ir maybe you can also shed some light on the risk uh, view you're taking. I will share very much an echo to uh, what Mart Martin just said. Um, uh, so I don't have much to add there, but there is one point that was mentioned before that I would like to get back to about the ample liquidity in the, in the, in the, in the industry, which is true. We all know that you know, most ship owners are cash rich. They have quite a bit of reserves, and banks and other financiers in general are struggling to find business. That's for sure. However, that's you know, uh, a tree in my world, while the forest, the picture for the forest is very different. And let me give you some very simple math just to get my message across. You have a fleet that worth, let's say, a trillion, plus or minus, nobody has the perfect data, war fleet. If you apply you know, a reasonable inflationary metric to that for the next 10, 20 years, um, and new technologies, which are much more expensive, that fleet probably will cost one and a half, two trillions in the next 20 years or so. If you apply a modest leverage on the fleet, which again, historically, that's around 60%, nowadays probably it's less than that, you need more than a trillion, give or take. The total capacity in the banking world, and including all the leasing uh, houses, it's a fraction of that at the moment. I would argue whether it's more than half a billion even. So simple math, you need about half a trillion, sorry, billion I said, I meant trillion, you need about half a trillion in new capacity, lending capacity, to come to the business, to renew the fleet and modernize it. Because if we don't have the capacity, what's gonna happen is we'll be sitting here in the next two, three, four, five years, the average age of the fleet will go from 12 years to 13 to 14 to 15, and we'll be looking and saying, okay, where should I invest? Things are expensive, etc., etc., etc. So that's the big picture. So yes, there is ample of liquidity. However, we think there is a huge shortfall in the long term, okay. which is a very, very different concept. And 
no, no, of course, to look through. And if you order a ship now, obviously you look not just for the next two, three, four years. I think it is a long-term, long-term asset. Maybe not your investment. And, and I would like also to hear the views of the two uh, ship owners on the panel because I met a very, very large group recently. We went through the exercise of a massive order book they have. And I asked the question, okay, if you had to finance all the order book with bank debt, can you do that? And the answer was no. Yeah. I cannot raise a, you know, more than a billion so easily as it was like a few years ago. Yeah, and, and, and maybe and, and I would have turned also to indeed um, Moritz and Zuren on, 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 on that one as well, maybe combining that with your strategy, how you look um, at, at, at your future plans with what we heard from Iraklis and Martin. Moritz, maybe you can also... How about um, understanding your views I, there? I, I guess one answer would be uh, to say that, again, shipping is cyclical, and, and that means that a trillion can be 500 billion in a matter of, um, <laughs> of, of months. So that obviously changes the picture as well. And, and what we've seen uh, as well on the liquidity side, again, is that in, in some decades you have the bank lending uh, taking the lion's share, which I guess will always do. Um, in the last 10 years you have seen a lot of, and similar to you, what you guys do, you have seen a lot of capital coming through alternative lending um, schemes into the market, obviously higher price. Um, and for example, another example would be right now, um, the bond market is extremely open. Um, mm -hmm. So there's also ample liquidity available for shipping. I mean, it, I'm not saying it's always available, um, but I'm sure uh, liquidity will find a way into shipping in, in one way or another. Yeah, and, and of course you are... You are can, can I challenge that a bit? Because, yeah, of course. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> because since 2008, bank capacity has decreased significantly. You know, we're talking about you know, close to 100 billion or so. And since 2008, one particular region, China, has absorbed that gap and actually filled that gap and even did more than that. And now they have an exposure of 150 billion. Nobody, again, has the perfect data, but that's roughly the numbers that I have heard recently coming from China. So uh, bonds, bank debt, relatively, these are small numbers. A billion here, a billion there, three billion here. In the greater scheme of things, these are small numbers. That's the you know, challenge I, I'd like to No, to of course, but, but, but also turning back to Moritz, I think you're taking care of your fleet, obviously, which uh, I think probably is not that huge in terms of amounts what Iraqis is rightly pointing at. Um, so so you're, you're active in, in the container market, obviously, and, and, and sorry there. I, would you say there is some sort of particularity when it comes to financing container ships? So is there, are you see difference when looking around to other, other segments? It, it, it always, I mean, it always depends where you are in the cycle, and uh, arguably containers is, is again uh, in a very good stage, uh, which means that there's also a good chart is attached. If you have, uh, you know, cash flow visibility, then there's bank debt available. So, so right now, containers is doing fine. I guess uh, LNG a similar story. Dry is, uh, is is struggling a bit, at least for the time being. So it might be difficult to get kind of the same same leverage uh, margin structures that you see right now in, in, uh, in, in containers. But I mean, from, from our perspective, uh, we, we've been going through a restructuring in 2020. And, mm -hmm. and lesson learned is for us that to keep the leverage um, as low as possible, um, keep a, a high degree of the fleet unencumbered. Um, the fine balance that we have as a public listed company is that we that we need to return capital to shareholders. So we've been cranking out close to a billion dollars of, uh, of dividends to, to shareholders in, in less than three years. And you know, comparing us to the private owners, especially here in Hamburg that has similar fleets, that's money that they have on the balance sheet, right? Ready to invest. And then again, talking about the future and fleet renewal, our fleet is on average 14, 15 years of age, which is fine, but you need to do something. So it's, it's always a fine balance between you know, keeping a low leverage, keep paying a dividend as long as the market is good, but also have liquidity to, to renew the fleet. And that eventually means for us that we, we will incur some, some higher leverage relative to, to where we are now. And I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned uh, looking ahead in five years that there's a, a shortage of, of, uh, of liquidity. Uh, Surin, obviously you are, so far I know, you have no container business, but uh, no. uh, much more diversity in Balkis, offshore segment, multi-purpose. Um, how you how how you would respond to that? What would say how you're seeing 
market trends there? No, I think two, two, two remarks. First of all, um, I think liquidity will, will always follow the return. So in that moment uh, where you see that uh, shipping is, an, is in a very interesting industry and uh, returns are compared to other industries are higher, you will find other capital to be deployed or employed. Um, for us in special uh, as being um, more in the multi-purpose heavy lift market, so meaning actually in the infrastructure, so our core business nowadays is uh, assisting the world in the transition of energy. Mm -hmm. So uh, for, 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 from that point, uh, we're, having, we're having two mega trends that are both working to shipping, one a little bit more for us, maybe not so strong for the containers, but also will, and the other one is clearly the willingness of the EU to be CO neutral. And uh, really does not really matter, look into any vessels that are in the market. Uh, if you really want to be neutral, um, it will be nearly impossible with that fleet. So this fleet has to be renewed, all the goals have to be changed. Um, but for sure that's too early to see uh, where it goes. But um, one thing for sure, to renew the fleet, I don't see the big problem at the moment in uh, where do I get the, the, the liquidity for to pay. It's, it's much more the question, where do I find places in the world to produce those kind of very high technique vessels? I mean, this, we are talking about a total different kind of vessels. If we are looking into our last new builds, the Orca class being probably for the heavy lift market, the first vessels that could go CO2 neutral. Um, it was very difficult to find a yard that really can cope with this needs that you have to, to, to come to that solution and you need a very strong engineering team and that's again for Heron as having more than 80 engineers, maritime engineers in the group, uh, even for us it was a task but uh, if I'm a would say medium sized shipping company without all of this technology knowledge and not having this access as we have to large energy companies like Siemens or, or uh, Vestas, all of those, um, I have really no clue how to to move your fleet to that direction. And it's not a question of liquidity, it's simply a question of how do you want to build those kind of vessels. And if, you, if you're not asking that question, then you also will not have an issue with, with liquidity to deploy. Yes, yeah, so it, it, it turns into the next topic I would like to raise with you because that is really the the outlook. How how may the future look like? And and Max, I know you um, um, at your venture, you are looking also of also in, in that one, understanding the market uh, in, in its range. So, what are your thoughts sort on that one? Um, yeah, I I tend to agree with what Moritz said that. At the moment, we see ample ample liquidity, and, and outlook is that debt capital is is, is available um, for for all sorts of projects. Um, for sure, we see from the large corporate banks and also from from Chinese leasing a focus on modern eco tonnage, new buildings, um, and and support a transition and renewal of the fleet. But it's good to see that there's alternative capital stepping in to, to, to also finance older assets, which still have a place in the market. Um, and, and to see also a lot of uh, new solutions to retrofit vessels to um, where charterers might step in actually and provide funding solutions to ship owners to be able to, to um, install energy, device, uh, yeah, energy saving devices. So, so I think the, the capital markets or the debt capital market is um, is creative and and find solution for where capital is needed. Um, so so I wouldn't be too worried about uh, how the renewal of the fleet is funded. Yeah, thank you for that. And and maybe also turning to another angle of ship finance, our evolving landscape we are looking at is obviously still all what is driven by sustainability by ESG green financing. Martin, at, at FCB, how, how are you looking at that, that one, or are you just trying to be good in the margin and grab the deal? Or? So we were sort of unique that in the, in the US environment, we don't have any hard pressure. So we don't, we don't subscribe to Poseidon principles. We don't have an, 
especially since today, not an overly active government that presses on green. So we're sort of left to our own devices. And we, for ourselves, we formulated a very simple principle. Fuel saving is good for the wallet because you save just a lot of money on saving fuel. So green for us is the greenback, is the dollar, you save money. And as long as owners are incentivized to keep saving fuel, then we're happy to finance. So we don't discriminate, we don't go out of our way to find a green project. It is the entrepreneur that, mm -hmm. that takes the decision. They're incentivized economically or through regulation to do certain things, and we facilitate as a financier. We're not dictating what they should do. Uh, we follow, we don't discriminate. That is, that is how we approach it. Okay, so uh, interesting to hear. And Zoran, uh, I think we, I, you just recently did a lot in, in the off, offshore space, so that is, to our understand, the assets you're acquiring relates to wind farms, offshore wind farm, things like that. Is that a particular focus of uh, Haran Group to get more, become more green and attract green financing? Yes, for sure. We definitely can say that. Um, but that has to do with, with two things. First of all, as we are uh, in, in, with SAL in this industry, it's very important also for our clients. I mean, if you are transporting the offshore wind park modules nowadays worldwide, uh, for sure, Uh, your client is also asking you and approaching you, is, is asking for can you can you go with biofuels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also, uh, if you're then uh, presenting a new fleet, it is very interesting. Secondly, we also have uh, in the offshore repair business two units, and so we also work with uh, sustainability funds. Uh, we did green lending with uh, European banks, and I really did not feel discriminated, so to say, um, <laughs> was for sure an interesting exercise in the beginning. Um, um, but at the end, when we went through the whole process, uh, I really had to figure out it simply fits to the goals of the company. It's, uh, it's a structured way to describe, uh, but it's not, not a situation where I do say, looking into our general goals as company, Uh, that it does not fit, and for sure you can't uh, decide from one day to the other, now I'm green. So for sure we also have our second-hand vessels where we are, have to uh, take other measures where we for sure are looking for banks, and I don't have until today the feeling that it's totally difficult. Where it's getting very difficult, interesting-wise, is with insurance companies. So even we, we, we had situations where we were not able to give a, a performance bond for a, a transport of an oil rig because that's too dirty. Uh, such, an, such a situation I never have seen with the financier. With uh, export financing institutes, I have seen that. Okay, that's, that's interesting to hear. And, and Moritz, I think, as we heard, your setup is different from, from that of the Haran Group. But... I think, how are you looking, listed in Norway, how, how are you looking at the green financing space? I mean, we have a pretty clear articulated ESG strategy, which includes also a carbon emission reduction target. Um, we, we have been beefing up internally uh, teams. We have been heavily investing in, you know, certain new building technologies. We have... Uh,